We're at Wildwood Baseball Park where tonight the uh, Golden Raiders take on the Bayport Pirates in a uh, Fox River Classic baseball game. North comes in tonight with a 2-2 two two record uh, with all the rainouts and snowouts earlier this month. Uh, they've been busy this week. Uh, they're going to be end up playing every day. Uh, they lost to uh, number one state-ranked Preble on Tuesday. They beat Slinger on Monday in a non-conference game. And then last night they uh, defeated South to run their record for this week to uh, two and one. They had a loss earlier in the year to uh, Pulaski, I believe it was. But uh, they come in tonight against a uh, well-rounded Bayport team. Uh, they'll have one of the aces of the staff, Jackson Pottist, going. Uh, Jackson has pitched eight and a two-third innings. He's had one start. He appeared in two games. He's got a one and zero record. And uh, his ERA is a sparkling 1.61. So uh, he can throw the ball across the plate and uh, keep those Pirates fooled. North uh, could be in the game. The one thing that has hurt North this year has been their hitting. Uh, they've really struggled at the bat, uh, hitting as a team 164, which is uh, pretty bad. Uh, they do have some good hitters, and they have been hitting the ball hard. They just uh, haven't found holes, and if they can find some holes tonight, uh, they should be able to score some runs. Uh, joining me in tonight's, this afternoon's broadcast is Chris Wright. Chris had uh, 26 years at the helm, is that right? Or 28. 28. 30 years all together, and it's really weird being on this side of the uh, fence. As a matter of fact, Marty, I came like to the, one of their first games a couple weeks ago. Right. And the first thing I thought about was, man, is it cold sitting over here when it's 40 degrees outside? Well, I'll You're tell you, when I, uh, <laughs> when I gave up umpiring, it was pretty nice driving by the Field of Dreams, watching those guys stand out there in the 40 degree weather with the wind. Yeah, well, it's just weird how you're, when you're in the dugout, it's always, you know, you're so, your adrenaline's flowing, it doesn't seem as bad, but uh, now I know how the parents feel and the trainer and the athletic director and the umpires, I guess, too, to, that have to sit there and freeze, but at least we got a kind of nice day today. Yeah, it's, it's bright and sunny, a little bit breezy. I know uh, Sarah's right in front of the uh, press box running that camera, giving you the, that shot right there. She'll have it pretty nice. Richard down the uh, right field line is out in the elements, and he'll get it uh, pretty good when the wind starts picking up. Uh, what do you know about Bayport, Chris? Bayport, uh, let's just say they are the probably the premier, premier program in the conference. Better than, uh, I know, I heard that uh, Preble was number one in the state. They are number one, but I'm just saying over the long period of time, I would say Bayport is that, but yes, right now. Year in and year out. Yes, and uh, Preble right now is, is kind of taking the, the reins away, but if you're talking the last, you know, in the 2000s, you're talking about a team here that's gone to state uh, a number of times. I mean, they've been conference champs and 2010, 2011, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, really. So year after year, they're a preseason ranked number 20. And uh, Coach Simons, who's a Hall of Famer, we'll talk about him later. He's got a, you know, was a little bit of a setback last year for his squad. I mean, they were 17 and 12, uh, 11 and 7 in league play, which is not Bayport like, but uh, they graduated a bunch of kids, but they have a JV team that was 20 and five last year. So this is a this is a program, Marty, and they're they're going to be good. One of the things, and I'll take the blame for this. We don't have any stats for uh, Bayport. Uh, it'd be nice to see how they're hitting in that. We did get a chance to talk with uh, Coach Mike Simons prior to the game, and uh, first thing he said, "Oh, where's Chris?" <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I they're thinking of you, Chris. Yeah, that's, I was treated real. I saw Andy Conard the other day, treated real well. And Mike said, "Hey, why aren't you in uniform?" And you know, I, I kind of kept it secret, and uh, it's not you know a big deal, and it's a lot of people still don't know. But uh, you're talking, like I said, a team that's that's normally really good, and. Uh, Things, things are a little bit different this year with, with the weather. I don't know if you mentioned, Marty, that this is actually a, a non-conference game. This right here tonight is yeah, a non-conference yeah, game. They, okay. The conference met, and they've decided to start conference play next week, Tuesday, and they're going to play everybody once. 
Okay, all right, and, interesting. Uh, Didn't so, know that. Uh, so I know North you, plays every day this week. Yep, yep, and those are all uh, non-official league conference games, but even though they're conference uh, teams, um, just because of the weather and there'd be too many games pushed back. Um, this way, if you lost a couple of games early, right. it's not that big a deal to right. have to make them up. Yeah, and Coach Simons, uh, they have not basically played since they come back from Florida. He said they had uh, one scrimmage yep. uh, last night against yep. uh, uh, Preble, maybe, or Pulaski it was. Yep. And there you see down on the field, uh, Steve goes in the blue, uh, giving his lineup to the umpires and uh, Mike Simons in the gray sweatshirt. Our umpires tonight are uh, Tim Muldoon. Tim will be uh, umpiring the plate. And then uh, right behind Simons is uh, our other umpire, John Callahan. Uh, Sheboygan people would know John, his son played for South and uh, was a really fine player, good hitter. So those will be your umpires, Callahan and Muldoon. Running through the uh, starting lineup. I could run that by you too. For uh, Bayport, starting at third base, number seven, Jake Berg. At uh, catcher, number 17, Jake Hebit. At in center field, number three, Call Vilanek. Playing first base, number 16, Bobby Tilot. At shortstop, number 25, Jet Thielke. The DH is uh, Carter Highline, and uh, he's batting, I believe, for the pitcher, uh, Steve Stefan Nagu. And then uh, at in left field, number 20, Logan Donnert. And right field, Brett Stanza. And uh, out at second base, uh, Josh Shackelford for the North Raiders as they trot out on the field. Their starting lineup, batting leadoff in center field is Harry Feinberg, batting second and catching number five, Anthony Call Alvarez. We've got some notes on him. He's having a good year. Batting third and playing short, number two, Brent Witter. Batting fourth, number 27, and playing third base is Nick Ashkelevitz. Batting fifth, the left fielder, number 21, Ethan Schurg. Batting sixth, the pitcher, number six, Jackson Pottist. Batting seventh, number 11, and playing out in right field, James Schreier. Batting eighth, and playing first base, number 44, Brendan Fortin. And batting ninth, the second baseman, number one, Nathan Hendricksy. And now for our national anthem. Play ball. This is our first baseball game together, Chris. Yep, um, very strange. 
Very, very strange. Uh, one thing uh, you didn't mention in the warm-ups or the introductions was Jacob Nazy, who would uh, normally be playing. Uh, he's in my notes. We don't want to use everything up at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but go ahead. Yeah, I was going to mention, one. yeah, he's out uh, with some uh, rib problems, and hopefully uh, be back next week. But uh, Had a chance to talk with him yesterday, and he said he, he wasn't quite sure what he did, but... Uh, it was something with probably a twisting kind of motion, and uh, they said he had to take at least a week off, and then after that, if, if he felt good enough, he could start playing, but uh, even the doctors aren't quite sure what it is. Yeah, I talked to him before. He said he feels a little bit sore, and uh, that doesn't help no. much at all. Well, that's another bad out of your lineup, and he's an outstanding oh, fielder. He's a real good player. He's a, he's a Division One player and not having him out on your uh, field and and then your lineup that's it's a big loss let's talk a little bit about the uh, pitcher here for north this is jackson potus he's a four-year varsity player he's division one player as well going to be going to indiana state throws extremely hard someone who's worked very hard in the off season he he did the uh, fitness training and things to get himself uh the best shape he can be you like him on the mound because he's a, a good pitcher, but uh, it also causes your defense to suffer a little bit because he does a pretty nice job over at first base when he's not pitching. Yeah, and he's uh, he's got a lot of pitches too. You're gonna see uh, fastball, curve, slider. I had a lot of pitches Change. too. They weren't all <laughs> strikes though. Yeah. And, uh, we had Jackson close last year against uh, Bayport in our opener when we beat them four to nothing, and he he struck out like five of the six guys. So. We'll see how he does here on the mound today, Marty. Jake Berg leading it off for the Pirates. Takes that first pitch on the inside corner for a strike. Uh, like I said, I was uh, asleep at the wheel. I didn't uh, call Bayport early enough to get some uh, updated stats. Uh, I do want to throw a thank you out to Steve Goes, who on short notice <laughs> was able to get uh, put together some things for us and uh, we have it here tonight. We can use that. Matter of fact, Chris, I am such a nice guy. I'll even share the stats I got. How's that? An account of uh, two balls and one strike for Berg. Looks like he's pretty selective. Took that fastball and ripped it foul. About 64 degrees out and uh, sunny, but uh, when you look out at that flag in center field, it is just howling. A lot and different uh, than yesterday, Marty. Yesterday the wind was coming out of the north, which means it's going to be, you know, very diff makes it very difficult to uh, score. Uh, today with the wind blowing out, maybe we'll see a few more balls hit out that direction. We have a full count. Uh, Berg making uh, Jackson Pottis to work. His first batter. Walk, rides up high, it's a ball, and uh, Berg draws the walk. I will say that Bayport traditionally will not bunt right away. They normally will go right after teams. Attack. Yeah, Hebit is the first, is uh, the batter. He's uh, the catcher, number 17. Makes a strike. Hebert. Hottest drives uh, Berg back to first. By the way, Chris, <coughs> uh, did you see that? Were you here the night when they played Preble? Yep. Did you watch the whole game? Nope. Okay. Uh, you may have seen, if you're here at the beginning. I did not see the beginning. Okay. Uh, Preble tried to steal. And it was a good pitch down the middle. Cal, uh, Anthony, call Alvarez. 
very quick exchange from glove to hand. Peppered that guy out. That was one of four in the game. He threw out four guys at second base. Wow. It was amazing. And uh, in yeah, talking to... Likes to run. Yeah, and in talking to uh, Steve Goes prior to the start, getting some notes together, he said Anthony's got six in a row that he's thrown out at second base. And one thing that'll help that is when you have a pitcher that keeps the runner close. Yep. Well, Jackson's throws hard, so that that'll shortens, help. That shortens it up. But uh, Bayport's a good. They know how to t lead bases off. And Strike out for uh, Pottist, his first. That brings up the uh, center fielder, number three. Cal Verlonic. Well, with Verlonic playing center field, you would think he's a pretty fast runner. Yeah. Hayport, uh, base runner over there, definitely leaning back towards first, which means the attention that Jackson gave him earlier uh, was important because it's keeping him there. The ball foul. I don't think it quite made it to New Jersey Avenue, but it's uh, out there. Back-to-back -back batters that after that leadoff walk that Jackson's got ahead 0-2. Another throw over to first. So you got five things written down for us to talk about. We've already knocked off three of them. <laughs> oh, we got plenty to talk about, Marty. How about back Another back? strikeout. <laughs> Brings up Bobby Tlot. Tlot playing first base. I think a big advantage for Steve goes this club is that they've played some games, Marty. Now they are just two and three, but I think just the experience of getting on the field helps them a great deal compared oh, to Bayport, who just time. got on the field yesterday. Right, they played a, a scrimmage game we mentioned against uh, Pulaski. Uh, it's live pitching, but it's still it's not the same. And seeing someone like Jackson Pottis who. He's got to be one of the better pitchers in the league. <laughs> in the state. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> the two guys that uh, threw for uh, Preble the other night threw pretty nice. The second guy, oh, yeah. a left-hander, big guy, Oof. threw very hard. I thought uh, Askalevich uh, really hung in there nicely against him. Yep. Them. yep. Yep. There's a swinging strike that time. Pottis strikes out the side after a half inning of play. Bayport nothing. North coming to bat. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest. <laughs> Still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. My schedule along. We're back at uh, Wildwood Baseball Park where Sheboygan North is getting ready to take their first uh, turn against uh, Stefan Nagai on the on the roster sheet, Chris Nagai is a senior. 
You got him listed as an outfielder pitcher and he bats and throws right handed. Well, last year, Marty, we opened up the season against Bayport, and we went up there and beat them four to nothing. Ben Miller knocked in two runs early, and then uh, later on, Jacob Nazy knocked in a run, and the combination of Western York and Jackson Pottis, as I mentioned before, Pottis pitched, I think, the last two innings, struck out five of six. And then we played Bayport the last game of the season, and uh, we lost one to nothing. Oh boy! On Senior Day, which was kind of depressing. Bummer. Yeah, and we uh, we had chances to score in the uh, fourth through seventh inning. We had guys on second and third. We loaded the bases in the fourth. We had two runners on. In the hey, fifth, in that Preble game, the you know, North hadn't done anything really all the game, and they uh, got two guys yeah. on in the uh, ninth with nobody out. And next guy hits into a double play. But they still were able to load the bases with two yep. outs and uh, just couldn't come up with that big hit. Yep. Speaking of Weston Yurick, he was uh, at the ballpark the other night. Had a chance to speak with him. He's doing well. Lead-off hitter for North is their center fielder, Harry Feinberg. Now, I don't know Harry very well, except from what coach goes. He uh, was a home school person and so uh, didn't play for us for the first two years. My understanding from Coach Goes is that he's uh, extremely quick, very good, solid uh, outfielder, and knew right away that this is going to be the guy we could pencil in to follow up Dylan Lindau. As a leadoff hitter. Yep, as a leadoff hitter. and uh, Feinberg's uh, having a tough time at the plate, Chris, hitting uh, 154, but uh, it's early in the season, dump in a couple hits, and all of a sudden that jumps up into the respectable range. Nye guy missing on that pitch makes the count three balls and no strikes. Yeah, I heard a lot about Harry. He's going to be a nice player for the next two years for North. Takes one on the inside corner. So did you do any recruiting before you uh, <laughs> decided to retire? Get Harry on the ball club? No, I didn't. Tell him you I don't, don't want to do that homeschool stuff. No, and actually we, <coughs> I did some uh, open gyms and things, and uh, he uh, was never around or anything like that back in November. Next up is the catcher, Anthony Call Alvarez, and uh, I remember Anthony from last year. He's uh, gotten a little bigger, Chris. Yeah. He's uh, put together. Yeah. Uh, Anthony is a... He, his other sport, just like uh, Eric Johnson from last yeah. year, you know, they're hockey players, and yeah. those are the kind of guys you like having behind the plate. The problem with Anthony is he <laughs> got hurt all the time in hockey the last few years, and last summer he got hurt in baseball as well. He's just had some rough rough time so I'm glad to see him out there very mm -hmm. nice young fella Anthony hitting uh, 222 as he steps in he does have a double well, he has two hits watch for uh, Harry to be running Ooh, there would have been the pitch right there yep you know that uh, coach goes likes to run and uh, now with a 2-1 count Basically, uh, got a nice lead over there. Set the tone by, nope. Whoa, drive out to uh, center field. That's trouble. That's uh, making a nice Ooh. running catch for uh, Bayport was uh, Paul Verlonic. That was a good one. That was a nice shot there by Anthony too. Just kind of hung up in the wind a little bit with that south wind. Yeah, if he pulls that one to uh, left field, you know, that's got a better chance because it'd be moving away from the, with the wind. Brent Witter, the shortstop, is up. He is a good one, too. Yeah, he's a dandy. Nice young man, workaholic. There's the steal. Uh-oh. And Ooh. he's in there, and he's going to try for third. Verlonic strong throw to third is not in time. Harry Feinberg with a steal a second and goes to third on the throwing error by the catcher. He 
And he had a good man up to drive that run in to Chris. I gotta be honest with you, I didn't think that was the best decision to get up and run, but. Uh, yeah, it, I agree with you there. Put the pressure on the defense, though. Force him to make a play. And this is a golden opportunity for the Golden Raiders. Now guy switching from the windup now to the stretch. And that first pitch to uh, Witter was a strike. Well, he, he knew that he was going to run Harry. At some point. Yep. Might as well test out uh, Bayport's catching. Curveball in the dirt. Nagai having a hard time being consistent on throwing strikes. And as they say on uh, many of our telecasts, Bayport will concede the early run. The <laughs> many infield. of our broadcasts, do they say that during basketball? Well, uh, <laughs> I'm saying on TV. I remember years ago doing a game with Stu up here, and you had a guy on first with two outs, and I said, yeah, Stu, they're going to be running early in the count. And he said, really? <laughs> so the first pitch, your guy was off and running. <laughs> Hard fall straight back. Evens the count at uh, two and two. Well, Brent doesn't strike out very much. I think he only struck out a half a dozen times a year ago. Feinberg on third. Witter looking to drive him in. Yep, he had 17 ribbies a year ago. Pretty good contact hitter. There it is. There it is, right down the middle, hanging curveball. And uh, that's a single. And an RBI. It's our first hit of the game. Nice job of hitting. I thought the pitch by uh, Nagai was uh, right there. Right down the chute. Next up for North is uh, Nick Askalevich. He's playing at third base. There's another thing when you have Nice out. You know, he's normally your third baseman. Now you gotta take an outfielder and put him at third. Yeah, but Nicholas plays third all summer. Oh, he does? Yep. Okay. And uh, he's very good third baseman. Um, but actually, you know, if we didn't have a special player like Jacob there, he would be our regular third baseman. But we, I asked him a year ago if he'd be happy to play outfield, and he was do that, and he pitches. And Yeah, he's got uh, Witter running on a pitch in the dirt, and he's going to be safe with a stolen base. I was going to say Nick uh, stepping in, hitting 167, but the games that I've been here doing the pitch count thing, and watching him bat, uh, he's he's a much better hitter yep, than that. He'll, watch he'll come around. He'll hit this one right into that right field hole there that they're providing. He really can go the other way with the with the baseball. Watch him to poke one between first and second here. Hopefully driving that run. Two balls and one strike. Going the other way, and that one does get across. New Jersey Avenue. Nick also drove in 16 runs a year ago. He's going to go to a junior college. Speaking of RBIs, Witter's RBI on that base hit was his fifth of the year, and he leads the ball club in that department. Wow. Another ball bouncing in the dirt. Great job by uh, Hebert to uh, knock it down and keep it in front. I don't think he's throwing a curveball for a strike. Uh, I, th I actually, you know what? I think he threw the curveball for a strike to Witter, and he blasted oh, it. Oh, I thought it was a <laughs> fastball right over the plate. Regardless, it was, it was in plate. the middle, middle of the, of the plate, plate. You're right. But uh, yeah, he's been pretty inconsistent. There was one. Caught uh, Nick by surprise. And uh, that brings up. The left fielder, Ethan Schurg. Schurg pitched uh, against uh, Preble. I thought he did a pretty nice job. Uh, I mean, about the third or fourth inning, he lost his control a little bit, walked a few too many guys, but uh, hey, he hung in there. Yeah, he's gonna, if he throws strikes, he can be right on. He was a junior varsity player last year, but uh, he's uh, also a catcher, and I saw he was playing second, and then I saw him now he's playing left, 
Hey, I got to show you this. I found this in the program <laughs> from last. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> Wrote all that stuff out for us. The Shurg's not on here. No, he was a JV player, and like I said, someone that I would have expected to be one of the top pitchers for North this year. And uh, that was like ball a three. And Anthony, like Anthony was hurt a little bit and gone, so Ethan would catch. Uh, when I was talking to him the day he was pitching, he says, uh, yeah, I do some catching too, and he's got his own equipment. He was yep. pretty proud of it. It was the nicest stuff you'll ever find. Yeah, he, uh, and he's one too that would always tell me, oh, I don't care, I pitch, and then I can catch the next day, kind of like Eric Johnson. Oh. You know, not the next day. But I remember know. doing game double headers where the guy would pitch the first game and catch the second, and that is his child abuse. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jackson last year only hit a buck 92, but I'll tell you, he was maybe the most clutch guy for us. Whenever we were in a situation, we needed a run. He's hitting half of that. He's hitting .091. Yeah. But uh, not, uh, like I said, he seemed to be big time clutch a year ago. And this is where I hit him last year, too, in the sixth hole. He was very comfortable there. And there Bouncing he goes. Ball down the oh. third baseline. A nice play by the third baseman, Berg. He steps on the bag for out number three. And after one inning of play, North on top, one to nothing. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Hi, may I please have an application? Thank you. Skip the drama. Get your diploma. Good. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. Yeah, back at Wildwood Baseball Park. And North's got the lead. Life is good, Chris. Well, took advantage of the walk, Marty. Walk, stolen base, and a clutch hit by Wittert and to knock him in. And Little pressure put on Bayport there, and with Jackson basically striking out everybody except the leadoff guy. Good start for the Raiders is right. Jackson threw on Monday. Jeff Fielke, the shortstop, is going to lead off for uh, the Pirates against uh, Jackson Pottis, who struck out the side last inning. Chris, he looked real good. Yep. Uh, when uh, Witter pitched last night, he looked real good too. I think the main thing is, and you know this, of course, is got to throw strikes. And Brent is pretty much a strikeout guy. I don't think I would have had him as a starter. He would have been my kind of my closer guy. But uh, Coach Go says we need uh, our best guys to be pitching, and Brent was more than willing to accept that role. Brent played second base. The last few years, but uh, he's a heck of a fielder and player. Loves playing defense. He can't get him enough ground balls to make him happy. <laughs> he just loves fielding ground balls. That curveball hung up a little bit uh, out of the strike zone, and uh, Tim Muldoon, our home plate umpire, called it a ball. It's uh, one ball, two strikes. And that's a good pitch right there, too. You don't want to groove one there. And another strike. Oh, that's four in a row for Jackson Pottist. Hey, all you got to do is pitch a shutout. North wins one to nothing. Yep. I like the approaches on the offense by North, though. I, I think they might get a few more. Next up for the Pirates is Carter Highline. 
He swings and pops it up. Alvarez getting the bead on it, and he makes the catch. Nice play by Anthony. By the way, Chris, those high pop-ups aren't easy. There was one uh, yesterday, very high, right in front of home plate, and uh, like a true shortstop. Brent, I got it, I got it. He's pitching though, but he's pitching. But he's, I got it, I got it. That sucker was up there. <laughs> he missed it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know how that is, how it tails back? Oh, Came yeah. in a little too far, and it went yep. over his head, and he couldn't reach back. And Yeah, it tails. Yeah. There's a trick to catching them. Yeah, we work on that, believe it or not, in the gym. We have guys toss balls and do that kind of stuff, try to put a little backspin on there. One and one to uh, Logan Donnert. Logan falls that one straight back, makes the count uh, one ball and two strikes. That high line pop up, Chris, broke a string of four state straight strikeouts. Watch the caduce here. Oh, slider looked like Marty. Yeah. We have a couple more games coming up, but Chris forgot to bring his schedule, so we don't Tuesday. know when. Tuesday. Tuesday. Yep. Next Tuesday? Yep, north-south. Okay. And they had a north-south just the other night. I wonder yep. if that was a non-conference, too. It was uh, well, added. It, it was added. They, they played their regular game when it was scheduled, and then because the teams hadn't played for, the, for a while, Coach Loomis and Goes got together and said, why Let's don't get we one just in. We're gonna get one in because yeah. they haven't played for so long. And then the, the first conference game will be the North-South game next Tuesday night. Okay, cool. Right here. Yeah, we'll be here bringing that ball game to you. Bouncing ball over to uh, second base. And uh, making a nice play was uh, Hendrixy. And that's the end of uh, the second. After one and a half, North still on top, one to nothing. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. This is unacceptable, and something Feeding America is working to solve. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States, including yours. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Getting ready to lead off the second inning for Sheboygan North is our right fielder, James Shear. There it is. <laughs> it's looking yeah. for that. James is one of those players on the JV that one of the better players. So the ceiling is high for him. Very nice young man as well. Hitting an even 100, yeah. one for 10. That'll pick up. Always interesting to got to make those adjustments to varsity pitching, and James is still learning that. Someone who. Uh, when he came in as a freshman, could basically play anywhere, and obviously a little loaded in the infield, so went out to the outfield and does a very nice job with that. He's gonna pitch a little bit too. Someone who can take some innings for you. I think he's, uh, let's see. He hasn't pitched yet, no. but it's early. Yeah, and he's someone that can eat a couple innings. There's a whole bunch of those guys that are that way in. I'll tell you, 
16 balls in the first inning. Three more here to start the second inning, not what Coach Simon yeah, wants. My guy has had a lot of trouble being consistent. Whoa. You know, what my thought would be is you've waited a month to play a game, you know, three weeks to play a game since uh, Florida, and now you're out there walking uh, the leadoff guys. When you say guys. Florida, did he take his team down to Florida? They always go to Florida. Every single year they play in Tampa. They play in the Tampa area, and it's... Uh, it's a little different than when we went. And that was a special deal. Uh, well, we went to Disney World, which is a little different. They go where, where I basically in charge. They do something called, they, they call it a family trip. <laughs> so basically <laughs> the coaches only have to be there for practices and games, and families have to basically monitor things. Where when I went down there, I mean, I was in charge of, of the, the herd. Oh, great. But it was, it was worth it. It's absolutely worth it. Brendan Fortin. Oh is uh, playing first base today with nope. uh, Pottist on the mound. Another uh, senior, got some time. Dedicated off, young man. Yeah, off and on, and uh, I know in the North-South game last year, he had three hits. You need those kind of guys, you know, yeah. they don't always play a lot, but uh, they're there to help when uh, uh -oh. you need it. Woo. Given Shear the stolen base on a delayed steal, actually caught the catcher by surprise, but he did make a nice throw. Hebert did. Now your job, Brendan, is to get this down. Yeah, get that the guy could to have third. been that could have been a fake bunt steal. <laughs> Horton steps out. I didn't see the umpire give him timeout. No, he did not give him timeout. You are right. And you can maybe explain that after this pitch, Marty. Another bunt foul. Nye guy, I would think is probably a little inexperienced because when Fortin stepped out and was not granted time, he should have, Nye guy, he should have uh, pitched the ball. And the umpire chance. would put up his hands, correct, for timeout? Not necessarily, no. For a timeout, though, does he have to put, no? No, he doesn't. So if the umpire, oh, he went two strikes, he's bunting, Marty. Yeah. Um, what the batter should do is request timeout, and then if he doesn't get it, you stay in and hit. Right. But you don't step out and then ask. But what does the umpire do to show that it's timeout? Hold his hands up, usually. Okay. okay. Yell it. Probably do 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 both verbalize and signal. Pitch rides up high. That's a full count again, Chris. I'll tell you what. Two strikes, he's bunting and pitcher can't throw strikes and Brendan's not getting it doing his job. Brendan get get up in that box and get it up, get it down here, kid. Nice swings away. Follows it back. Yeah, waste that pitch. Can that guy th throw two strikes in a row? That's the question. <laughs> he hasn't done a very good job so far. We're in the bottom of the second, North on top, one to nothing. And uh, Fortin swings through that fastball. Not, I would not be happy if I was coach goes. That's a pet peeve of mine. You, know, you practice bunting just like you've been throwing strikes. You've been practice bunting since March 18th. You have one job to do and you'll let us down. And then, you know, when it comes down to, you know, playing time and asking for the little things, those are the little things that get you into the lineup. The coaches remember that. Next up for uh, North. Is Nathan Hendricksy. Here's another good JV player from a year ago. Yeah, Pitching. nice play at second base in that last inning. Good, uh, good uh, job of, uh, like I said, can really field the ball and again trying to. Uh oh. Now, nah, guy not paying attention to Shear, and now we're in good shape. 
Nice stolen base by Nathan. James, he, pardon me. Yep. That was a pretty bold play too. I thought he was gonna be in trouble there, Marty. Now I gotta put the bat on the ball. See what Hendrixie does here. Curveball rides up high. Hebert uh, calls time, wants to talk to his pitcher. Now, and as he does that, Goals is talking to the hitter. Which he can't, because he already talked to Fortin. Technically, you're right. Can't have two. Uh, well, you can talk to him. if I mean, if they go out and call time, you can talk to your guy. He technically now, Steve could not call time out and talk to his batter first. But if the pitcher and the catcher go out and talk to each other, then he's got free reign to talk to the batter again. There's our run. Wild pitch. And that uh, stolen base got uh, Sheboygan another run. Got to like that, Chris. Stole a run. Four stolen bases and in two innings, and basically two runs on two walks. That's the other thing. Leadoff walks scored both times. We got a full count, Hendrick C. And another bouncer. Struggling, to say the very least. Yes. Nobody warming up in the Bayport bullpen. And we're back to the top of the order for North. Harvey Feinberg, who walked in the first and scored, is up again. And Hendricks, he taking a nice lead off first. He's going first pitch, and there's a foul ball. Why not? They haven't thrown you out yet. Uh, I think the batter may have hit the glove of Hebert. Herbert. Hebert. And the umpires, John Callahan and uh, Tim Muldoon, are going to talk about it. It's a little hard for us to hear up here. I don't know if you heard that double click. Chris didn't hear it. He's not even talking to me. I'm trying to figure out what, they, what the result was. But you're right about hearing. That was one thing they always talked about when they built this pre press box for years is... It's all enclosed. Yep. They should have built it with one with the window. And that's one thing they've never changed. You always thought that maybe... Uh, you look at the configuration. I mean, they could do it, obviously, but uh, it'd be kind of hard. Expensive, for sure. Yep. Sliding doors, windows... Ebert says, hey, man, I didn't mean to get my glove in your way. <laughs> Glad they missed it. Mike Simon's coming out to uh, talk to his pitcher while the uh, umpires and Steve goes talk. And he's got first base. Catcher interference. be an error too, Chris, by the way. And that brings up uh, Anthony Call Alvarez, who uh, hit the ball very hard back in the first, only to have it caught by uh, the Bayport center fielder. Hopefully he can find some green grass out there. All right, Raiders got runners on first and second. Hendricksy at second. Feinberg on first. Alvarez is up. That guy's had trouble all ball game throwing strikes. And the other nice thing is uh, North already has a run in. And a 
another ball. What do you think, Chris? Wild pitch, pass ball. Hit the plate. Wild pitch. Got it. And now, I know we talked about this, and uh, Dylan Lindau is going to uh, lacrosse, I believe, if he followed his plans. Is, uh, is he playing baseball? He is not playing okay. baseball. Okay. Because the last I heard, he was not playing baseball. Pitch and change, Marty. Yep, Naga is out. Leaving with a two ball count to Alvarez. Okay, Chris, trivia question. New guy comes in, he walks Alvarez. Who gets credit for the walk? Nigai, doesn't he? I say Nigai. My guy? Nigai. Nothing you can do. Can <laughs> that, that guy. Oh, my the guy. guy. Still is batter. Okay. Not sure, but I think you're right. Well, you would know that. I mean, you did the book and stuff for years. Just ran into a situation like that. I have him 18 for 47 on strikes, Marty. Right. Ooh. Josh Shackleford is uh, now pitching. That guy went uh, one and one third innings. Not the starts you want, as I said. You've been sitting around in the gym. You're itching to play and got your opportunity to get on the mound and uh, did not do well at all, to say the very least. Shackleford was playing second base, Chris. And I don't think uh, Nagai stayed in the game to uh, to go to second. I think he left the ball game. We'll have to see who comes up to bat. Two strikeouts. Four walks. I had only so let me see here. I got three, Marty. Catcher interference. Oh no, you're right. One, two, three, four walks and a catcher's interference. Gotta like that. Holy cow. Norse got one hit, two runs, and they got yeah. guys on second and third. I was gonna say on the plus side, he did only give up one hit. Yeah. But uh, you don't want uh, to go any farther with uh, Brent and Nicholas coming up. Infield now in, they've changed that little situation. And down to Ole, he starts him with a curveball, Marty. Yeah, that's a... Uh, Gee whiz. Yeah, I was thinking, get, get a strike in there. Alvarez with the uh, opportunity to drive in two. He's taken here, Marty. Oh, I'd say. That's just not the right decision there. I don't know why he would start him off with a curveball. It's three and one to uh, Anthony. Josh Shackelford on the mound, now taking over for uh, Stefan Nagai. Oh, swung at ball four. I'd like to have that one back. Oh, big time. Winners waiting on deck. Shorten up a little bit on the bat. He's battling. That was the same pitch as before, but he takes it this time for ball four, and bases are loaded with only one out. Witter singled in the first line drive out to left center. That's who I'd want up right now. Oh, yes, sir. Leading RBI guy on the team so far. 
He can't find the strike zone either. He's no. not even close. These guys are all falling off to the right. Boy, Coach Simons has got to be beside himself trying to find a guy to throw strikes. That you do, oh, that you do not want to happen. I thought the general rule is you go at third base, you go as far as the third baseman is away from the bag. I was watching him the last couple of games, and uh, that guy at third, he'd be two times further away from third than the, than, the, than the third baseman. But they never threw over, not once. That was a good uh, job by the catcher there to frame that pitch. That looked a little bit out. Good one for Brent to take, though. Looking for one to drive. What catcher that you had over the years had the best framing? Kurt Miller. Kurt Miller? Uh, you're talking 15 years ago. I don't mean to disrespect any of the last few catchers. Eric Johnson did a nice job last year, too. There's your There's shot. There's a drive straight out the center field. Verlonic makes the catch, but tagging at third and scoring is Hendrickson. And North has another run on us, this time on a sacrifice fly. Another good hitter up for North, Chris Nika Oskalevich. See if he this time can bang that one to, to right field. Curveball taken the other way, but foul. I'll tell you, three runs. Did I tell you Miller nice. was over by my house early in the school year? My wife and I bid on this uh, fire truck ride to school. And he was one of the firemen that <laughs> yep. came over. Whoa, now they got a runner. Oh, Breaking boy. a little too soon. Soon was Feinberg, and he gets thrown out at third base. But uh, North does come up with a couple of runs. And after uh, two full innings, it's North three, Bayport nothing. We taught him how to hit a baseball. How to hit a receiver, the strike zone, the net. You taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. But how much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? I want to eat. Apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat? One in five children struggles with hunger in America. Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Getting ready to uh, start off the top of the third is uh, Jackson Pottest. He's had a long time in the dugout, Chris. Hopefully that doesn't uh, affect him in a negative way. What I find amazing, Chris, is North has three runs and only one hit. Yep, one hit. <laughs> Seen all sorts of things. You don't see catcher interference maybe once a year, or months every other year, something like that. Bayport hasn't even cycled through their lineup yet. Uh, bleeding off the third inning is uh, Brett Stanzel. Stanzel's a senior, playing out on out in right field, hitting in the eighth spot. Not yeah, eighth spot.
Pitch a little bit low. Eight, nine, and one. These guys got to attack. Right. Very good point, Marty, about the long time between half innings there. That was a lot of talking between the yeah, that was the other goals, thing too. And then the change of pitchers. Right, and, uh, the controversy, not just the, the yeah. walks and, and that, but the, the other business. Hottest with that strike uh, goes to one ball and two strikes. Good miss. Field deep for Stanzel. Doesn't matter. He swings through a pitch and strikes out. Now the pitcher, Josh Shackelford. That's 22 strikeouts, Marty, in 11 innings. That's uh, pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> Just Coach Tom Desatel down here. Yeah, he, he was at the game the other night too. Still wearing that stupid Dodger hat. <laughs> that breaks up the no no. No hitter shackle for with a nice hit. Actually, I told Tom the other night he was over on the other side next to uh, Dan Stengel. I said, if you if I knew you were going to be here, I'd have worn my Dodger hat too. <laughs> <coughs> we got uh, we got a tough weekend this weekend, Marty. Your Cubs and my Brewers. Yeah, down in Chicago. I asked my wife if she wanted to go. She said, no way. <laughs> She didn't want to go. I said, you mind if I go alone? You know what she said? No way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be an interesting series. The Brewers, what do they have? Did they win last night? Yep, they're eight, eight in, a eight in a row. Both teams are red yeah. hot. Both teams. Well, Cubs lost last night. Yeah, but four to one. They've, they've won a bunch, too. <laughs> like it showed up on my computer. Cubs lose one to four. <laughs> could be. Maybe. Hurry. Oh, get one. Yeah, they did get one. We'll give the second baseman an assist, four to six. That was Berg that just got done hitting, and that now we have uh, Jake Hebert, the catcher, up. Hebert uh, struck out back in the first. I'll tell you, he's been getting a workout behind home plate. <laughs> Yes, he has. Line drive foul down the right field line. Well, I will say this, Bayport went one-on-one -on, -one on their trip, but... Uh, Only they, two games? I think they had another one, but it wasn't on the stats. But uh, they had won a, they had lost a game to Tampa, one of the Tampa high schools, eight to six, and they won 17 to 10. So obviously not big dominating pitching performance no, but, offensive. Uh, but they could score a little bit but, uh. well like you said Pottis one of the best in the state you don't see pitchers like that very often and no. uh, given the scores of the games they didn't see that kind of pitching in Florida either hard to believe he's a senior already Pitch is outside, one ball, two strikes. I will say this, we when we went down to Disney World, Jackson wasn't a big fan of the rides. As a matter of fact, he didn't go on any. Was he too tall to get on no, some of them? No, he just not comfortable with, with rides. Well, motion stuff. sickness, maybe. Yeah, I'm not a big ride guy, though, either. Uh, I went on a few just because. Me either. I went on the Tilt-A-Whirl once when Patrick was quite small because he wanted to go on and uh, dad was done. <laughs> It was Ralph time. <laughs> but, uh, Jackson was always dressed sharp down in Florida. He always wore his like Floridian or Hawaiian shirts, and that's There's it. A check it, check it, check Ask, it. Ask, please. Come on. Ask again, Anthony. The Empire says no. Oh, you're supposed no. to grant it. Oh boy, here comes Coach Goes again. If they request it, he said no. 
actually, after all of that, as a base umpire, you're almost committed to saying no, even though you thought he swung right at the beginning. <coughs> I did the same thing earlier in my career, and uh, I think I was talking to Dennis, or maybe it was Tom Redsek, but they said all was granted. Well, another thing with the lead, Marty, is uh, it could take away the running game of Bayport. You don't want to give away outs. Yeah, exactly. You also have the fear that he's left-handed, regardless if he has a great move or not. Mm -hmm. So that uh, really with two outs here, you would think maybe Bayport would run here with their leadoff guy on, but they do trail, so but he will be off and running now. Full count. Jake Hebert hitting. We mentioned uh, Hebert is uh, catching today. Otis knows what we know. He's keeping the guy close. Just in case he wants to take an early start. You will not take any liberties with me. Runner waits for the pitcher to throw home. There's a drive out to center field. Drops in for a base hit. His pitcher cuts. That a boy. Yep. Nice piece of hitting by Hebert. And that puts runners on the corners for Bayport. Verlonic. Still the pressure on Bayport here with two outs. It is their three hole here though, Marty? Yeah, he's pretty good center fielder, Chris. And we got a meeting at the mound. What's he telling them? I don't know. I'm, I would be very positive here. I would be your one pitch away. The pressure's on, on him. Just throw strikes. Be tough behind the plate, Anthony. Uh, I don't think Bayport's going to be, be doing anything, but you want to set up a situation here with first and third. If the guy does take off, what are we doing? Are we throwing down? <coughs> Which I assume they will. I was going to say the way uh, Anthony's been throwing, uh, They'll, uh, in all likelihood, throw down trying to get the runner stealing. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be running here, Marty. I don't think they're going to take the bat out of the uh, three-hole hitter. Rulonic struck out his first time, but uh, I got a feeling he's going to be swinging a little bit more this time. North on top, three to nothing. Bayport threatening with two outs in the top of the third. Sweet pitch. Good, good rip by Verlonic. Better pitch right inside in his hands. Richard and Sarah running camera. Sarah's on that shot. Richard's down the uh, right field line, giving you that shot. The drive foul. Now pressure intense is even more for the batter when you're up one two. I don't know if you notice that but when he switched over to Richard's camera the runner on first gave him that little wiggle with his butt. <laughs> I did not notice that. He must have known he was going to be on camera. Good pitch again there. Rides a little bit outside. Yep. Evens the count at two and two. We have two outs runners on first and third. North on top three to nothing. Hoping the batter's gonna sneak or maybe swing at that one when you're down in the count. It'd be a little bit closer. Hottis blows it by him. Good fastball. And that strikeout ends the inning and the threat. And after two and a half innings of play, North on top, three to nothing. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. That's why we're here. We're free and here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. 
Gary, financial aid forms. Picking a college, man. You and us. We go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Go to getschool.com. It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Back at Wildwood Baseball Park where the Raiders are getting ready to hit in the bottom of the third, they lead it by a score of three to nothing. Chris Wright, the former coach. We can't call you the coach anymore until uh, basketball season. Uh. <coughs> Or football season, whichever comes first. One, uh, one hit and three runs. That's right. Yeah, Bayport's out hitting North now. Now Nicholas was batting when uh, North attempted to steal third, thrown out there to, to end the, the threat in the second. Oof. Good one to take though there, Nicholas. Take two and hit the right. Actually first pitch hit the right on the outside corner. It's got a little slurve action, Marty. Yes. Once he's around the plate, he can be uh, fairly effective. Especially if he comes in on the batter and then comes across yeah, the plate. Good, good point. A bouncing ball into right field. What I say about hitting a right that he was going to do? And that was not a good pitch by the... 90% hey, of his hits go to right. Yep. What do you know? <laughs> <laughs> I know everything. <laughs> Thought he could, was going to do that in the last yeah. inning or in the yeah. first inning, but uh, got that hit there. And let's see if uh, North continues with the pressure. One thing, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but one thing I don't think you see enough of in uh, high school from high school pitchers is work in the inside part of the plate. Right. I think they fear hitting the batter. Exactly. Yeah. I agree with you there. And uh, the last few years, our team's plunked enough guys. <laughs> Trying to work inside. Yeah. And uh, with Coach goes running all over the place, they're going to keep Nicholas kind of close. Not a big threat over it to run. Ethan Schurg is at bat. He walked in the first. Pitch outside and a steal attempt and uh, making it easily is uh, Askalevich. And he ran, not great speed, but right pitch to run on a curveball, Marty. Yeah, I was just going to say the same thing about Nick. You know, he's not built like a thoroughbred. Fifth stolen base, five of six. For he north. is? Oh, for north, for okay. North, yeah. That spin move. Nice play by that second baseman. It's a lot easier to run when you're up three to nothing. And uh, again, if you have a tendency to figure out what uh, Bayport seems to be throwing. There's a breaking ball for a strike. Schurg uh, looking down for the sign. Have you figured out what the signs are yet? I do not remember what they were. Sure, it goes down swinging. Again, a, kind of a slurve-like pitch. Go ahead. I was just going to say I always had to remember my own signs. <laughs> <laughs> I got to be honest with you, Marty. I won't talk about them, but I made it so simple. I made the game simple for kids. Jackson Pottist up. Jackson uh, hit into a fielder's choice his first time. Grounded the ball right to the third baseman who uh, picked it and then stepped on the bag for the force out. Harry tries to go inside, Marty. Yeah, that was a nice pitch too. Sure. 
Shackelford uh, getting his sea legs. Second inning of work. Jackson likes the 5-6 uh, hole. Another pitch for a strike. Makes the call, makes the count, one ball and two strikes, one out. We're in the bottom of the third. Askalevich on at second base. It's a bouncing ball to second. And a pick up and a throw for the easy out. Askalevich moves over to third. Nice play by, you know, we never did get the kid who's playing second base, Chris. Shackelford was there to start the game. I think it's, it looks like, like six or something. I can't see that far, Marty, anymore. Mars McGriff, if it no, is. No. Uh, he's not an infielder, so. James Shear takes that first pitch for a ball. See if he can clutch up and four is better than three with the lead. Breaking pitch comes in high. He's seen six pitches, Marty, and they've been all balls. He's got a good eye. He knows what not to swing at. He had a good shot. Askelevich taking off at third a little bit. We're sharing up here in the booth. By the way, fans, we had something happen before the game that almost <laughs> never happens. Chris knows what I'm driving at. He bought the drinks today. I told him buy something cheap. So he grabbed a couple of empty water bottles out of the garbage <laughs> and filled them up at the bubbler. <laughs> well, you two said balls Gatorade, but I wasn't sure what kind of Gatorade guy you are. Uh, Shackelford does a good job of pitching out of a jam. Man on second, nobody out to uh, limit North to no runs. At the end of three complete, North on top, three to nothing. Marie, you have prediabetes. Prediabetes? I don't have time to eat right or exercise. I'm a busy mom. Oh, you're a busy mom. Yeah. This is great news. Busy moms never get prediabetes. Wait, what? Let me just... Yeah, this is all the people at risk for prediabetes and way over here, busy moms. No. I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. Big half inning coming up for the Raiders. They have the number four, five, and six hitters for Bayport. Chris, one thing that... Uh, I wanted to talk about was uh, next year the WIAA is going to uh, all spring baseball. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, kind of mixed emotions for one. Uh, being in Chihuahua, I mean, we played four years in the summer, and I got to tell you, the weather was a lot nicer. But if you're a player, it what was, happened to the Legion team those years? They just were gone, and then they were had to be come back, and the weather was that way, but. You know, if you're a player, you have the much more opportunity, you know, with a spring and summer season to play more games. So that as a player, and for development, that's a good thing as Jackson starts off with a nice strike. Um, but uh, then you look at schools like Howard's Grove that has, you know, Kohler that only has 150 kids, and all of a sudden you have track and uh uh, you see more uh, pull-up teams I up? think you're going to see that. But, you know, schools all over the, the state, you know, have their schools that are small that figure it out and do it. So uh, that's the one thing. You know, basically the only teams that were left playing in summer were 
to Milwaukee Suburb Schools and Sheboygan County Schools. I was telling somebody today, take a line between uh, Sheboygan and La Crosse and anything north of that line, there were no summer baseball no. teams. It was all south of that. Yeah, and a lot of teams have changed, and it just got to this. I, I can see a change. I know. A couple of balls by Pottis now has made it three and one. And I can see a change um, occurring, and Coach Coates is not going to like to hear this, but I can see them starting possibly, you know, moving the season to maybe the end of March, start games maybe the April 10th, and then moving the state tournament one week back, which would shorten the Legion season up. And you, you know, you can't move. Um, there's a problem there too, is because of the fact that there's a walk. Because um, football starts basically yeah. now the first week in August, and the country's Legion teams tournaments, you know, for national tournaments are all at the end of July too. So you can't s lengthen the the Legion season an extra week in Wisconsin because of the uh, yeah, of tournament. That. You just have to shorten it. And uh, I can also see something, you know, that challenging Legion is there's going to be more club teams in the summer. Kind of like summer mm, AAU right, teams, right, you know, yeah. picking players off, which might hurt city things. But then again, you're going to have, you know, what are you going to do with kids from Sheboygan Luther now can play, you know, possibly and Christian can play on the Sheboygan Legion team. So there's and pluses and They've minuses. had some of that uh, in the past, not very often. Uh, I think there was an Irish boy that maybe played uh, Legion ball instead of playing at uh, Luther. We have a courtesy runner at first. I think it, uh, I don't know who that, num what the kid's number is. I'll try to get that for you. The hitter is Jeff Thielke. Thielke struck out in the second, leading off the second. It's that one back and out of play. Well, Jackson, I know, wants to give attention to that runner. But uh, you're up three to zip. Um, um, work on the hitter. Work on the hitter. You're ahead on the hitter now. Um, pound that strike zone. Ground ball gets you double play here. Can't run. I can't run. The runner on first is uh, Ryan Campanen. We're in the fourth, and that's strikeout number seven for Jackson. Yeah. Jordan Bindus is hitting. A lot of, lot of batters in this uh, sixth spot. They started off with uh, the DH there, but then when uh, Nagai was lifted and they needed another fielder, Highline was not uh, a second baseman. So they brought in... Um, Bindas instead. Nice comeback for uh, Pottist on that second hitter, Chris, after walking the leadoff guy. And gets ahead again. Now, I know North's supposed to play tomorrow, but showers look possible so leave it all out in the line today you know five games in five weeks is pretty crazy for a high school team uh oh off the catcher yeah that's an owie Oop. like I said Anthony got banged up quite a bit in the uh quite a bit in the uh, hockey season. And now you gotta go and take foul balls off your chest. Your Ever hands seen a hockey player that didn't get hurt? <laughs> <laughs> or banged up anyway? No. He's, he can skate. Pop up on the infield. Oh, uh, who's taking charge? Sure. No, Hendricks. Don't. Hendricks. Don't call me Hendricksy. Hendricksy. Yep, Nathan Hendricksy. Okay. Just wanted to, I wanted to make sure I was right because uh, I've been calling him Hendricksy and yep. you were wrong when you called him Hendricks. 
Yep. <laughs> Of course, I suppose you go by either one. Sure, his dad Bill will let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Logan Donnard up. Logan grounded out to uh, second base. And I'll tell you, great job getting a head on, head on hitters. Campanen. Didn't quite read the move that time, but he got back in plenty of time. And uh, see a couple of kids coming in from the bullpen area. Let's see if uh, Coach Simon sticks with uh, Shackelford. It's the 16th batter, Marty, and he's been ahead of 14 of 16. Oh. Get a lot of outs that way, Marty. Really? that uh, Tom Fogel said the best pitch in baseball is strike one. It is. Oh boy. Seven strikeouts through uh, three and two thirds. going to get this one too, Marty. Yeah, He's even to count at two and two. Stance, but uh, I have to be a little quicker. Grounded out to second his first time. If I was the on deck better, I'd be worried. <coughs> Don't lose him now. If it loads him up. Campanen will be uh, on the move. Trouble. Ball is hit the right, and it drops in a base hit. Shear not able to get over and make the play. It wasn't hit very deep. It's a good pitch. Stick the bat out. And again, Bayport threatening. Two outs, runners on first and third, and they trail it by a score of three to nothing. And again, you'd think uh, Donnard would be holding at first, not taking off. Although he is the left fielder, so he probably runs fairly well. Got him on a strikeout last time, Marty. There's yeah. a nice pitch. I don't know what that. Brett Stanzel is up. He did strike out back in the third. Bayport's starting to roll over the lineup a little more frequently now. Another Jeez. pitch of beauty. Jackson's cruising. You see Fortin holding the uh, runner. Fly ball out to right. Sheer calling for it. And they run into each other. Bayport's going to score a run. Shear had the beat on it the whole way. And then the center fielder for North, Feinberg, uh, got in the way. All right. You tell me what you're marking. I give him a hit, I guess. Well, it's got to be an error on somebody. Mm -hmm. Okay, who do you want to give the air to? The right fielder dropped it. Fielder but uh, he was banged into by the center fielder. That's where I was going to give him a hit. But that's okay, we can do whatever you want. It's uh, one you less think? earned run. Well, it's got to be air. I'm going to go. I'm not arguing with you. E. I'll save my arguments for the line this summer when we're playing tennis. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be an E. E8. E8, I would say. Well, the bad part is Bayport's on the line, and they still are okay. threatening with runners on first and third. Shackleford. Yeah. Shackleford up. He singled last time. Yeah, and that's more pitches for Jackson, which I always did not like. 
defense doesn't make a simple play. And the one thing North has done really well at tonight in this game is not allowing free bases. You know, like missing a cutoff man or uh, committing an error or throwing wild pitches. Jackson jumps out on top. He did the same thing to uh, Stanzel, but uh, he was able to hit it out to right field. Oh and boy. back to the fence. Trying to put a little something extra on it. And it uh, cost him a run. Three to two north. One ball and two strikes on uh, Josh Shackleford. To get this last out and end the half inning with the lead. Alvarez, that one right off the tip of his glove. That's a pass ball. Well, good decision here by Anthony and Jackson. We need one pitch and we're out of it. We still have a lead. But uh, not as comfortable as I was uh, 15 minutes ago, Marty. Oh, no, for sure. Bouncing uh -oh. ball to third. Askalevich comes in, makes a nice pickup, and throws it away. Boy. And that ties up the ball game. Well, two errors. Cost you three runs. Shackelford stays at first. Now, Nicholas did a nice job of coming up for the ball, going towards the target, but he kind of pumped instead of just releasing right away. And Sam Salami's uh, courtesy running over at first. And uh, that brings up the leadoff Berg. hitter, Jake Berg. Berg walked and uh, reached on a fielder's choice. And now Jackson is not as happy. A little extra on that one. Right. First right. time he's not been ahead of a batter. He should be long out of this inning. There's a strike. Evens the count at one and one. And he can he can only control what he can control. And he's got to throw strikes. Oof, nice pitch. It's just a little out of the strike zone. Yep. There's some barking going bit. on from the dugout as the umpire turns over. Yep. Looks over, I should say. Pitch evens account. Jackson has always had two strikes on the last three batters, but he hasn't been able to retire them. Yep. Gotten a hit, an error, and a fielder's choice. And there's a strikeout to finally end the inning, but Bayport ties it up with three runs on a hit. And uh, at the end of three and a half innings, it's uh, all tied up. This is the story of a boy who is very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org.
don't fix them, sparks from dragging tow chains could cause a wildfire. And that could be scary. Ah, Only you can prevent wildfires. Back at uh, Wildwood Baseball Park here in Sheboygan, where uh, Bayport takes the field after having tied North with three runs in the top of the fourth. North will have their eight, nine, and one hitters up. That's gonna be a bit of a challenge to get something going, but uh, they can do it. Well, they've threatened every inning, Marty, and uh, that's that's what you gotta be on the positive with Coach Goes is, you know, we've got base runners on in every inning, and uh, we know we can run. Uh, the thing that worries me is uh, Shackelford is, uh, He's gotten his sea legs and he's thrown strikes and uh, he's been pretty good. Yeah, he threw 11 of 15 strikes in that last inning. Yeah, he had uh, two strikeouts too. I don't know what's going on here, Marty. 16 is going out. Yeah, that is uh, Bobby Tlot who was playing. He was playing first base. He might be it's maybe Shackelford's done. And I think that's the situation. Is there an injury? So it must be. And why would you let your guy warm up and then yeah, <laughs> pull I him think at the last second? The, the case. I mean, it's not 80 degrees outside. No. <laughs> and uh, when you said it was in the 60s to start, when we walk out of the park, it won't be the same. We now playing Scott. first base is uh, Jake Plummer. Thought he was a catcher for Cincinnati. He was a quarterback for the uh, Cardinals. Oh, that guy. Maybe I'm thinking a of a snake. different Plummer. So Shackelford's out. Plummer comes in for him. Yeah, this game is uh, not moving along quickly. We're at the hour and a half mark, Marty, and we are just halfway. I know. First base, T-Lot goes from first over to pitch. Well, Shackelford did a nice job, Chris. Stem the tide, as they say. Went an inning and two thirds. Gave up one hit, one walk, two walks, three walks, no, one walk. And struck out two. No, I had him for no walks. They, uh, I gave that other walk to. Oh, it's. Uh, to. Uh, What's his name? <laughs> yeah. My guy. Yeah, he came in and walked him, but uh, actually, I think. Gave up no runs, though. My guy's spot. Chris Lenz out to see uh, what the situation was. Here, let me see what's wrong with your arm. <laughs> let me pull this for you. We'll make it better. Oh, we didn't mention Tim Moyer, or did we? We didn't first. mention the coaching staff. Tim Moyer, uh, Kevin Schmitz, I think, is still working with the pitchers. Uh, what's Mr. Peterson's first name? No, I haven't seen Steve. I think Steve, Steve Peterson. Been he's yeah, been working a lot. He he's had trouble making some games, but he's still on the staff. Yeah. <laughs> All righty, Brendan Fortin is up. Brendan uh, was asked to bunt his last time, couldn't get her done. This time all he has to worry about is hitting. And T-Lot comes in with the ball, on the first pitch. And we're cruising now, Chris. We got a quick worker on the mound. Fortin looking for that uh, Strike one to rip at. He can't find the strike zone either. 
Well, that's right. Let's get a couple of guys on, score some runs, get the lead right back. And the bullpen is up and rolling. And Middleton is next for Bayport on Saturday there. State-ranked team. Last thing you want to do is, when, as a coach, you tie the score, you get all the momentum, and then your pitcher goes out there and walks the leadoff batter. Yeah, really. For the third time out of four innings, that's what North gets. Yeah, I think Nathan's going to be asked to bunt here because Fortin is not stealing. Mr. Horse called him Hendricks. Hendricks. Okay, not Hendricksy. Okay, I can go. I can. I can go either way on that name. <laughs> There's no way Brendan Fortin is, is stealing a base. Hendricks, go we got up. a pinch runner coming in. Ethan Brooks, I believe this is. Okay, now that means that Ethan will be out of the game, not eligible. Brendan will be out. Oh, no, well, he can, well, he can if they do the re-enter, right? Yeah, which they will. Unless Jackson's done pitching, which I don't see anybody over there throwing. Better not be done. He's, I think he's at 76 pitches. 76 I unofficially have Jackson at. Ethan's got good speed. An experienced baseball player. Dad Jody works for the rec department. And Hendricks takes that first pitch for a strike. But leaving. He's going to Shorewood, Marty. He just... Really? Just, yep. Starts a new job next week. Oh, but Ethan will be able to finish out his school yep. year here. Yep. Nice. Nice bunt by Nathan. Tilot throws over to first for the out. Good sacrifice. And now you got two cracks. You got Harry and Anthony to, to get that run in. And as we've seen, Coach Goes is not afraid to uh, attack third base on the base pass here. So we'll see what happens. Feinberg is uh, walked and reached on catcher interference. Takes that pitch inside, almost got hit. Thought that pitch was high. The umpire didn't think so, so we'll give him a strike. It's one and one. Ethan Brooks on it second. We're all tied up at three. Bayport put a three spot on the board in the top of the fourth. North uh, scored one in the first, two in the second, and uh, squandered an opportunity in the uh, third. Line draw or bouncing ball to third base. Berg, he makes the play for the second out. Nice play. And a very nice play. Ethan actually got caught off second base. He went too far, but Berg elected to go to first for the out. Almost thought that uh, could have just kept on going to third then. I think that uh, the third baseman should have Made to play on him. him. Made to play on him. That was not good base running by Ethan. Brett Witter, Brent Witter is on deck waiting to get up if, if, uh, if Paul Alvarez can reach. There are two outs. Slow roller to the second baseman. Pool kill shot. And got Alvarez for the out and that's the end of the inning after four complete we're all tied up at three
when you're out there. There's no telling what you'll find. I see it, I see it! Oh, look at you. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. <laughs> find yours at discovertheforest.org. You want to talk about this? What are we talking about, Marty? You living under a rock, man? Exactly. At the state tournament? No, I don't know. Really? What's that? Uh, I'm not sure if it was at a Milwaukee school or not, but uh, one of the players, good players, very good player, starter, uh, got in some trouble with the law, stealing cars, robbing people at gunpoint. And uh, he, was, he was caught but not convicted, and uh, they allowed him to play in the state tournament. Oh, wow. He had a ankle brace. Wow. Keep track of him. I did not know that. Do you know and what team that was? No, I don't, actually. Wow. And I didn't hear about it till the other day. You know, having been in Arizona during the tournaments, I didn't pay attention to that. I asked uh, Dan Stengel about it. He says, you know, you got your rules for a reason. And, uh, you know, if he's not convicted or you know, go with what you have. So the kid did get to play, I guess. Now he's in jail for a year. Wow. Yeah. All right, we're starting off the fifth inning. Bayport has their number two hitter. And this is where we got to start watching Jackson a little bit. 76 pitches. Getting up there a little bit. Jake Hebert, the catcher, is up. And Pottis evens the count with that strike at one and one. Probably wants a quick inning here so he can get that extra inning here. Probably two more. Somebody's going to probably have to finish in that seventh. Don't overthrow, though, Jackson. You should just concentrate on getting these big outs. Three, four, five batter here. Big, big batters for Bayport. We're winding down here. Pitch is a little bit low. Three and one. Battle back. Hebert singled his last time up. Takes a breaking ball for a strike. You gotta be taken on that too if you're well, we got two three four hitter, right? Two three two, four. Two three four, four that's yep. correct. Yep, the meat coming up here. Two three four five. ball foul down the right field line. The key thing about them having the meat of their order up is we don't want Jackson to be meat. Right. And I believe he singled on a little duck fart hit. Oh no, he It was the one know, to right maybe? He did hit to right. He wasn't the little Sheer couldn't uh, catch up to it. It was a very tough fart. chance. Yeah. It wasn't the That wasn't the one I was thinking of. Oh boy. Which is low. Alvarez looking for it. Yep. And you never want to have those leadoff walks. That's for sure. You'd mentioned about North uh, getting leadoff walks. In two of the innings that they had leadoff walks, they scored. Yeah, that's Jackson's third leadoff walk of five innings. As good as he's been as throwing strikes. That you cannot do to see what they do. They got their horses up. I do not think they're going to be bunting. Call Verlonic has struck they out are. his first two times. What do they call there? Should be a ball. Call didn't, didn't single strike. Did the. Uh, Interesting. Give him a ball. Was a little bit high. Now their three hitters struck out twice today, so that could be something. I know right. Preble, as good as they were, they were bunting their three hitters last year. Verlonic pulls back. A little help, a little help. Yeah, looked like he might have offered, but uh, pulled back at the last second. Takes the pitch for a ball. It's 2-0. and oh. Jackson uh, getting himself in trouble. Throw some strikes. Askelevich creeping in at third. Just as he is, I don't think. 
He was swinging that time. Not much going on over at third base with the coach. Once that one foul. Lost art, Chris. You hardly ever see bunting don't at the major league level anymore. Don't get mouse started on this conversation <laughs> about bunting. Yeah. You practice how many bunts in the gym and you bunt. You got to be a little bunt. It's a pet peeve of mine, too. First of all, he's not up in the box. Squaring himself early. Now he's swinging. There's a strike. Two balls, two strikes. Berlanic, uh, I think he bunted that one foul on purpose so he can swing away. Now we can, Jackson will give him the hat trick. He got him. Third strikeout for Berlanic having a tough day. Next up for the Pirates is uh, Bobby Tlot. Now our pitcher. And uh, let's see if Bayport decides to take a chance on the base pass here. Lefty on lefty, you'd think uh, Pottist has the advantage. Maybe Bayport will guess and run. We're in the top of the fifth, all tied up at three. Bayport trying to get their uh, leadoff batter in the inning who walked over to second base. Rulonic, uh missed on a bunt attempt and wound up striking out. And now Bobby Tlot is up. He uh, walked and scored his last time up. Struck out in the first, walked in the fourth, and now he's up again here in the fifth. We're at 91 pitches. And he's gonna have trouble getting out of this inning. Yep. Well, and that's unofficial, Marty. Yeah. I may have missed one here or there. That's okay. And I know there's people throwing in the the bullpen, but that doesn't necessarily mean but that doesn't mean who's going in. Right. They're not off the mound right now. We do have a courtesy runner at first. I didn't catch the number of that young man. There you T go. T-Lot reaches out and hits it foul down the left field line into the bullpen area. There we got him. Grant Moss, courtesy running for the catcher at first. Good job, Scott, you are the man. Yepper. Took it, Bobby Tlot couldn't pull the trigger. That's another strikeout for uh, Jackson. Tenth of the game, Chris. Now Pilkey's we'll up next, he's got two strikeouts. Yep. In the book. We'll see if now Bayport runs with two outs. I'll tell you, what a job by Jackson on the uh, two, three, four hitters. Let's see, he blows hitters. this guy away. Chris, you bring him out for the next inning? Well, you only have probably one batter because he can only throw 100 pitches. Is that it? Yep. Oh. The new pitching rules put into play last year. There you go. Jackson's cruising. The other night when uh, Brent pitched, I think he ended, they, they run ruled south in the sixth, but uh, he had 92 through uh, his six innings. Yes. And another called strike. And at the end of four and a half innings of play, we're still tied up at three.
visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who once took care of you. Really? Buzz, what's up, man? You left some leaves burning out here. Yeah, I, I just, I, there was a, I had just came in just for a second. Come on, man. If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. You could torch the whole neighborhood. It's a good point there, Smokey. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. Getting ready to start the uh, bottom of the fifth inning. We're all tied up at three. North is going to have uh, meat to their order, Chris. Three, four, five. Here comes Bill Hendricks coming up to the. Uh oh! Now, right now I'm in trouble. He's probably home watching a game, and now he ran over to the ballpark and said, hey, get that guy taken care of. Well, this is where you got to score. You got your horses here now. Let's see if Brent can lead us off here, and Nicholas and Ethan or Jackson clutch up and get one in here. You know, Billy lives right across the street from me. <laughs> He's out there playing with his kid all the time. Never invited me over, though. <laughs> First pitch is a strike. I think there's some balls left in the Bayport pitcher, too. Yeah, we'll get them. Witter is uh, singled in a run back in the first and hit a sacrifice fly for an RBI. A six on the year now. One ball, two strikes. Oh, that was a tough pitch to take, Chris. Very close, but outside. Good eye. Yeah, really good eye. Oh boy. He's better than that. Yeah. He was going to want that, like one, that back. one back. Right. Exactly. He'll we'll have a discussion with his dad about that tonight. Why did he do that? <laughs> <laughs> Nick is up. He's uh, one for two. Struck out in the first. Singled and stole a base in the third. T Lot uh, trying to paint that outside corner. Did it to uh, Witter. <laughs> Guess I never understand that, you know, when the catchers get those short hoppers like that and they turn, <laughs> you know, all your protections in the front. <laughs> At least he saved the catcher, or the umpire, excuse me. That's the most important thing. Here's a good shot of T-Lot. Line drive out to right, drops in for a hit. Took that 0-2 pitch, drove it to, to right nicely. And let's see if Coach Goes has him moving again. Yeah, we talked about uh, you know batting averages being way down, but you know, a couple hits here or there, jack your average right up. Nick was hitting 167 coming into the game as two hits today. Now he's hitting 333. <laughs> yeah, it's really early. Yes. Sherg is up. Ethan uh, walked in the first inning and uh, struck out in the third. And uh, right now he's looking at an 0-2 count. Be interesting to see if uh, Askalevich is going to be stealing. I think he's going to not go on this one. He might wait for Jackson, see what Ethan does here. 0-2, this one's most likely going to be out of the strike zone. Nope. Is 
I said it, he rode him in. Pitch hit foul down the right field line. Count is still 0-2. For you novice baseball fans, that means no balls and two strikes. Skalevich on the move, pitch right down the middle, and an easy stolen base. Nathan Schurg not able to pull the trigger on that. And that's going to bring up Jackson Pottist with a chance to uh, help his own cause, Chris. Oh, I mentioned it earlier. And you said earlier, right? Yeah, he's been he was clutch for me last year. He really likes that five six hole. I know he. You think he can be clutch for you tonight? when you're up in the booth? Well, we'll see. Well, just hit. They got first base open, they realize it. Do we want to face this guy or the next guy? James Shear is uh, the on-deck hitter. Pottest hit into a fielder's choice and grounded to second. And he hit that ball to third hard. Yes. There it is. Bouncing ball to short. And they get the third out. We're going to move to the sixth with the score tied at three. Maybe he's really focused. Hey, Michael. Michael. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Maybe he's just being a boy. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, Work with what you've got. Or C, show solidarity. Oh, thank you, baby. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. We're entering the top of the sixth. It'll be the six, seven, and eight hitters for uh, the Bayport Pirates. James Shear going to be your new uh, pitcher. Pitcher taking Jackson out. I do not see who they placed in the right field, Marty. Eleven strikeouts for Pottist. Well, Ethan Shear has moved to right. And I think Owen Dominguez maybe is in uh, left. Well, according to my record keeping, none of the runs were earned. No, they were not. Gave up three walks. I think Dominguez is the new right left fielder, Marty. That could be. He had in there the other night, too. Well, All right, leading off for uh, Bayport is going to be uh, Jordan Bindas. And they got their bottom here, so James just throws strikes. We said when you play four games in four days, you got uh, everybody's a pitcher. Everybody's a pitcher. And, uh, so James pitched, hasn't pitched yet this year, and put him in a tough spot. Tie game, late innings. How many pitches did you have for Jackson? 97. Okay, yeah, he's done.
James having trouble finding the strike zone. It's three and all on the leadoff hitter for this inning. Batting number six, Jordan Hendricks might be quick to come in here as well. If James gets in trouble. You've already burned Ethan Brooks. He's a pitcher. Uh, Devin Lallensack can pitch as well. So we'll see if he, he's an alternative. That looks good too. There you go, James. Find your sea legs and find them quickly. Full count. Infield is uh, back deep. Sun getting a little low. It's going to be tough for the right fielder. Oh, got a gift on that one. Looked a little outside, but uh, home plate umpire thought it was good enough, and it's strike three. That's four strikeouts in a row now by Bayport. And the last three were looking. Logan Donnert is up. Logan is uh, one for two. He scored back in the fourth inning. Good comeback by uh, Shear. Long shadows, Chris. Kind of see it on your uh, TV screen. Yeah, it's a long game. Normally, two, 210 is about average. What are we at now? What two time? hours now. Yeah. 627, which basically it's two hours. And uh, we're only in the top of the sixth. Donner fall that one back. Way to hit off a Anthony Call Alvarez. Goes uh, telling him what pitch to throw. Well, Schmidt usually call the pitches for you, right? Uh, yep. This is my third game that I've seen North play this week, and. Uh, Anthony has missed more balls tonight than he did in the other two games combined. I don't even think he missed one actually. Tuesday and Wednesday, it's, right? It's a little bit different. The hot shot skips by Eskalevich for a hit. It's a fourth hit for uh, Bayport. All singles. Stanzel's up next. Uh, Brett struck out in the third and then uh, reached on an error. He gave it to the center fielder for running into the right fielder when he had the beat on it. And uh, that led to a run. I don't think Bayport will run here, Marty, because you have your eight hitter up. You don't want to lead off the next inning with your nine hole hitter. Now, as I say that, he probably will take off. The other thing, Chris, I agree with your uh, logic there, but the other thing is uh, why would you want to try and steal when he's walking, guys? Yep. <coughs> well, or has had trouble finding the plate. Yeah. You know, I got. He did have a strikeout and gave up a hit, but uh, he's having trouble finding the plate. Oh, nice stop by the umpire that time. And now it's 3-0. And James got to come all the way back here. It's got Mailoff, our director, in the truck tonight. Doing a whale of a job. Did forget the key to get in the ballpark when we got here, though we had to wait for Dick Oldrich. As you say, all the way back, James. Yeah, he did it. To the, was it? Yep, the leadoff hitter. Leadoff hitter, right. Three balls and one strike. Donard on it first. We're all tied up at three. There's a bouncing ball to Askalevich. Boots it, fires the second, and throws it out in the right field. But uh, Shear was right there. Another error on Nick. That hurts. Is 
Very fortunate that the uh, runner did not advance to third there, Marty. Uh, exactly. Good point. I like what you had to say, and uh, you may have learned this from Dave Gear, is that uh, on every play in the game of baseball, you always have somewhere you should be. You know, if you're thinking, if you're a thinking man's baseball player, yep. there's some place to be no matter what the play is. Yep. And in that case, Shear was uh, in pretty good position. Well, there's still, you know. Uh, not sure. One. Who is the right fielder? Uh, Dominguez. Sherg. Sherg moves over to right, oh, and Dominguez okay. is in left. So Sherg yep. was Johnny on the spot. Shears on the mound. We got one out, runners on first and second. Plummer is the hitter. Job, Anthony. Ball in the dirt. Donard on second. Stands along first. Plumbers up. Shears on the mound. Infield uh, is about halfway. Another good pitch. One ball and two strikes. A new hitter, right? Plummer, uh, well, he may have batted. I don't know if he's batted yet. I don't think he's batted. I don't think so either. He came in though, but uh, that's when they made some defensive changes. But didn't get a chance to hit. Take strike three there. And now we go right back to the top of the order with uh, Jake Berg. Uh, Jake is 0 for 2 with a walk. He must be a switch hitter, Chris. Mm, he's no. batting righty against. Oh, I thought uh, he was lefty. That's that drive there. out to left. Oh. Dominguez right there makes the grab. Very nice. And then at the end of five and a half, we're still tied. Wow, that was close. I guess sometimes things just happen. Devastating things the whole world changes in an instant. That's what happened to me the day my mother had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. Taking care of a family member can lead to plenty of questions. Fortunately, there's a place to get the answers for them and for you. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. And a new pitcher for uh, Bayport, their center fielder. Cal Verlanic is uh, moving up to the mound. Moving up in the world, Chris. That's what well, it's all about. And I was wrong. It was Devin Lollensack is in left, not Owen Dominguez. Okay. Lollensack with the nice catch in left. And he'll be in Pottis' spot. Mm -hmm. Lollensack was a pretty popular name for uh, Manitowoc. I think they're, uh, they live in Cleveland, Manitowoc County. <laughs> that counts. <laughs> counts for something. Sends up their uh, seven, eight, and nine batters. Yeah, 
James Shear walked in the second and scored and struck out in the third. berlonic has got pretty good heat, Chris. Powder River on that first fastball. Ball straight back. Hebert showing off. <laughs> Catching it off the screen. Off the netting, really. No balls and two strikes on uh, James. Hanging curveball is fouled, and it's uh, going to get out of play. Pilot went back to first base, Chris. And uh, Plummer may be out in center. Although he doesn't look like a center fielder to me, but what do you know? Could have been. Pitch is a little bit low. Count is even at two and two. James battling. Breaking ball got him. Brendan Fortin up. Brendan uh, struck out and walked in his two trips. Takes that pitch for a ball. Chris mentioned earlier that he is a uh, senior this year. Hard worker, dedicated guy, a team guy. Yep. Pitches up high. He can drive the ball, Marty. Big guy, put that swing together. You're right, he should be able to drive it. It's just inside, you know, three and one. The umpire's been calling that one all day, too. That that outside corner there, I was a little surprised he didn't call it there, but we'll take the count. He had a good shot, pitcher. That pitch is down. All right, now you have a situation, Marty. We, you've run for him before, and Jackson is out. And you can run for him, which is fine, but then somebody else is going to have to play first base. Yeah. Getting the pinch runner is more important at this stage of the game. And uh, coming in to run for uh, North is Cade Fredrickson. So someone's going to have to play first base. So He's the most important guy in the ballpark right now. Yep, you get the lead and run, and then three outs, you win the game. Well, and you got uh, Nathan up. Hopefully he can lay one down. Well, He's yeah. uh, walked and scored back in the second and sacrificed in the fourth. Let's see what they do here with one out. They let him swing mm -hmm. away. Ball has popped on the right field line in full territory and it drops there. I thought he'd be bunting right away, Chris, to be real honest. I didn't think he'd be swinging. That's one out. You have one oh, shot. Oh, one out. You're right. Yeah, you got to let I him would, hit. You know, I would have, I would bunt right. him too and let Harry give a shot. I would, because lots of things can happen. I mean, it's getting colder and he's your leadoff mm -hmm. hitter. Mm -hmm. I you're would, right. One I, out. But I, would, I wouldn't be afraid to bunt him here either. I have done that with right. give one shot. It's better in that second than there. The pitch is outside. Evens the count at one and one. There's one out. We're in the bottom of the sixth. We're all tied up at three. Let's see if Nathan Nolan can just Bayport knock in. with uh, 
Four hits, North has three. Pitch is high. Throwing curveballs to your nine hitter. Thank you very much. Pitch is inside. Veronic having trouble finding the plate. Lots of walks, Marty. That's yeah. a strike. Lots of walks today. Full count. Six, seven walks by Bayport already. Hottest had three. And uh, James no, had one. He had no. Huh? James walked one last time. Bouncing ball, a little pop up. Drops. Safe. And he's safe at second. We're going to give him a single. Fredrickson, oh yeah, it's got to be a single. Cade probably made a mistake there thinking that. He actually, at first he played it right. You know, he stopped yeah. to wait to see what happened, but he started to head back too soon. He didn't wait for the action to end. Can't believe that fell in there. Hey. Make him make a play. Yep. Put the bat on the ball. All right, Harry. Here we go. Come on, Harry, get him in. Two chances here. Maybe three. Get Witter up there. Harry's got a good eye. First and second, one out. Good speed, so he's going to be tough to double off, Marty. Harry's 0 for 2 with a walk. Scored a run. Oh, boy. That was a little bit. Coach uh, Goes didn't like that call. It's called a strike. Looks like he could have gone either way. That's playing politics, Chris. Pitch is up high. Verlonic has uh, struck out a batter, walked a batter, gave up a looping hit. Texas leaguer. There's a good pitch for a strike. Harry's got to do some work now, Chris. Oh, yep, this is a big pitch. Rip a shot. Big, big, big pitch. Way open. Look where the second baseman is in the first baseman. You have a huge gap yeah. at the second base spot if you can go to right. Oh, jeez. Curve ball. Put yeah. it in there. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, it was a good one, Marty. Oh. I tell you, he really came back, hit that corner, and then threw that curve ball in there. Anthony Thought they had him on the ropes. Yeah, well, hey, we got a guy left. Anthony Call Alvarez hit the ball real hard in the first. Uh, he's got the power. Let's see if he can rip one here. There it, there is. it is. Out the center. It's up high, though. It's going to drop. It does. It's a base hit. The runner's coming around and scoring for North, and they've got the lead. Cade Fredrickson. I take that bat. He, yep, he scored. Cade scoring on that base hit by Anthony Call Alvarez. How clutch. What's interesting about that, Chris, is that he hit the snot out of the ball his first time it was caught. That one, he got it in a little better spot to drop it in. Yep, and great batter to have up here, too. Yeah, see if uh, Brent can add to the lead. It's 4-3 to three north. There's three outs away from a win. Which is right down Main Street, strike one. Cade Fredrickson uh, turned on the afterburners. There's no chance for him at home. A good job of running on that hit. Pitch is in the dirt. Evens the count at one and one. North has had other opportunities. They didn't always cash in, but uh, they did this time. 
Nice hit there, Anthony. That was huge. Yeah. Right up there confidently and poked it right there. Sounded good, too. Yep. It wasn't like that pop-up by Nathan <laughs> that just found Nord. That was a solid base hit. Kind of like, you know, I know Steve likes to, to run his guys, but uh, you do that, and then Witter's going to be walked. Right, yep. Which is up high. I think I'd rather let Brent swing away here. Knock that run in. Though Nicholas has got a couple of hits today. There's a drive out to left. Driving the left fielder back, but he's got the beat on it now. And uh, makes the catch. Donnert making that grab, but uh, North comes up with a run. All they do now, all they have to do is shut down Bayport in the seventh. At the end of uh, six complete, North four, Bayport three. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Todd's a great guy. I mean, look at him. What a sweetheart. Attaboy. Wait, Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untod like of you. Come on, Todd. Come on, man. Got some switches, Marty. I was afraid of that. Yeah, Ethan Shergs now moves from left to right over to third. Sherg uh, is at third? Yep, and Cade Fredrickson stayed in the game. Outfield. Yep, and he's in the Fortin spot in the eight hole. And uh, Nicholas Astalevich is now your first baseman. Okay. Nick going from one corner to the next. Yep. And Fredrickson, I believe, is out and right. Yep, and north, three outs away. But uh, they have two, three, four to deal with. I may have called the wrong outfielder on a catch for North. Uh, Lollensack made yep. a nice grab in the top of the sixth. Yep, not Owen Dominguez. Right. Yep. That was my fault. Hey, that's okay. Okay, it's going to be a tough inning for uh, North. They've got the two, three, and four hitters for Bayport. I don't know. Nice start for... Uh, I think Bayport was taking a pitch there. And Probably James did right the right th thing there. Threw it right down the chute. That one, not so much. Count is even at one and one to Jake Hebert. Hebert is one for two with a walk. A nice job behind home plate. There's a drive out to the gap in left center field, and that's going to go to the wall. It's going to be at least a double. Hung oh. that one a little bit, Marty. Yeah, that was a nice hit, unfortunately. We'll see how Bayport plays this now for the bunt. You have the three-hill hitter who's a uh, three-hole hitter. Max Kersher is out running for uh, Hebert. Yeah, it'll be interested to see if they bunt to put him over to third or they're going to take three shots to knock him in. I'd take the three shots. Got to figure your number three hitter is not going to strike out four times in a game. This will give him a chance to hit. 
but that's just me. Yeah. Devin Lowensack's playing really deep, Marty. Yeah, you're right. This is a big boy, though, even though he struck out three times. Nicholas thinking he's bunting. He does. He is, does he's he's down a nice one. And there's, they get the out. Well, good play, but a nice sacrifice. And that puts uh, the courtesy running Kersher over at third now. And North is going to play it in. Bobby Tilot is up. Which is a good play, I think, Marty. Tilot struck out twice and walked. Force him to shoot it through because the worst case scenario is a tie. Now if I'm sure here, I want to keep my runner a little closer. Good pitch to start. Nice pitch there. And batter's probably thinking fastball, fastball, fastball. Good decision to start with a curveball. And it was a strike to add to the bonus. All right, no balls, one strike. Another breaking ball, this one hit out to the gap again in left center field, it's gonna drop for a single. Lollensack corrals it and throws it in, but not before Bayport has tied up the score. So we're tied at four. Jeff Fielke, the shortstop is up, he's uh, 0 for three. Be interesting what they decide here. You know, we talk about these uh, 0 for threes and 0 for twos, and you know all the strikeouts. You have to understand that was when Jackson was in. It's <laughs> not quite the same anymore. Right. That's why I was a little shocked that they actually sacrificed bunted there, mm -hmm. like you were saying. Right. Take your three shots. Another runner, something, something going on. Number 21. I mean, they have like 40 guys on their roster. <laughs> right. Sam Salami. And now they might take a shot at stealing a base, too. I don't think they'll do it necessarily right away, but. You had mentioned right in the beginning of the game uh, with Jackson on the mound, you know, the other thing that helps Anthony call Alvarez is having a pitcher that throws hard and then keeps the runner close. Uh, I don't know if James is quite as adept at throwing hard. Oof, oof. Just a bit high. And Anthony saved uh, being on second base there. Here's the five hole hitter. Pitch. Oof. Got that one with the frame. Yep. Get a strike. Still got to get a couple hits here to get them in, so count on your defense here. Runner That's holding it first, another good pitch for a strike. Count is one ball and two strikes. On Thielke, he's 0 for 3 in the ball game. Alvarez doing a good job keeping the ball in front of him. Salami holding tight at third. He's not getting much of a lead at all, Chris. That's about as much of a lead as he'd ha had on any pitch so far in this at bat. I think he was hoping to get plunked there. <laughs> I think you are exactly right. <laughs> now on 3-2. You wonder if maybe, just maybe they'll. Yeah, third base coach threw some signs out there. Some action going here. Made a good shot there. Man at first, doesn't break. And it is ball four. Uh, had him. Yeah, Three had straight balls. Right. That's a killer. Can you set up the infield fly rule? Bindas is up next. Jordan is uh, 0 for 2. The sixth spot in the uh, Bayport lineup is uh, interesting. 
Because Highline started as a DH for, uh, oh. oh boy, wild pitch. Uh, settle him down now. Now what are you going to play for here? Now do you you got to call the infield in again? You do. Uh, I would think. Got to cut down the lead run. Uh, like I was saying, they Nagai was in that spot being designated hit for, and then they'd made a bunch of changes, and Bindas came in and has, has had two at-bats in the game already. The chance to give them the lead. Infield all of them on the grass. Sheer down on the count, two balls and no strikes. Salami's on at third. A pop-up foul territory and out of play. Had the pop-up, it didn't go in the infield though, Marty. Yeah, so field key it. is uh, on at second. Problem is, <laughs> pop-up on the infield, Law, you gotta catch it. Trying to get the curveball in there, but missed. It's uh, three balls and one strike. Now do you come back with the curveball with first base open and set up your double play, or do you attack with him possibly hitting a shot? Infield remains in. Just on the outside, another walk. Not, not the worst situation there. Nobody warming up, it looks like. We can see anyway on the uh, north dugout. Steve Goh is coming out. It's a rough spot, and, you know, goes back really to having so many games in a week. I mean, you know, you've got some really nice pitchers out there, but they've thrown already, and, you know, you can't use them. So now you're getting to your uh, second and third tier pitchers. And uh, it makes it tough. Bayport, this is our first game. We've got, you know, we talked about the disadvantage in terms of seeing live pitching and being on the field, but uh, you do have all your pitchers ready. So a double, a single, a walk, and a walk. The only out was a sacrifice by uh, Bayport. And. Uh, <coughs> Talking about a guy who's going to be up in the lineup if he uh, clutch hits here after two hits already. See if North can turn that double play. Witter to Hendricks to Astolevich. It goes to Sherg. He's going home. Got to throw Pitch in the dirt. James. Alvarez uh, with a great stop saved the run there. Last inning, James was 10 of 20 for strikes. And, uh, I think right it was against... Uh, North or South the other night. There was a comeback or right to uh, Witter. Went home and Alvarez threw the first for the double play. Another pitch for a ball, however. We got to worry about this hitter, Donnert. Donnert is uh, two for three and he's scored a run. And another pitch, not even close. How many pitches you got James for? Uh, Enough for him to get tired. Well, the problem is he's... He's only thrown two strikes out of his last 13, Marty. That's the problem. So, James, uh. just need two here, buddy. Just need two. I would think he's taken all the way here. And he's got one of them in there. We need one more. And he did take all the way. Infield is backed up now. Uh, third baseman is even with the bag. First baseman inside on the grass. But short and second are back. That's strike three. And he takes strike three on the outside corner. That was a great pitch. I don't know what he was looking at. That was the problem that you had if you took on the pitch before is you put the pressure back on the batter if it's a strike. And uh, didn't even put the bat on the ball. 
Stanzel's up, Chris. He's uh, 0 for 3, but he's reached a couple of times. Yeah, on two errors. And that one out to right that should have really been caught, but uh, outfielders ran into each other. Wow. Ball one on that first pitch. Let's not make it so exciting, James. What Throw a, a couple great, strikes early. Yeah, what a great out. The liner pass a third baseman out into left field, and Bayport has the lead for the first time in the game. Darn. Uh, yeah, Darn is right. Just out of the reach of Ethan. Sure, get third. And Brings up. Uh, the ninth hitter, but it's uh, Grant Moss who came in to uh, courtesy run, pinch run. For uh, Plummer. Oh, Mike Simons, the coach for Bayport. 414 wins, Marty, he's 10th all time. Our 21st all time, 10th active for wins. 414 wins. I was reading in the paper, Horizon High School in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona is basically firing. Oh no. <sighs> Hit by pitch, Moss drives in a run. Basically firing what? Their base, well, pretty much the whole staff for a negative atmosphere at the school. The hit with the baseball coach, this will be his last season and he'll be gone next year. 39 years, wow. 800 wins. Wow. They're letting him go. They've had some issues out there, uh, not just at Horizon, but at other schools too, with some things going on. Here's Nathan, or no, who's? Number one is uh, Nathan Hendricks. Yep, Nathan Hendricks. Warming up. Yeah. There Mike. was an article in the paper prior to that one about the Horizon coaching staffs uh, about ejections during the basketball season. Did I, did I tell yep. you that? Over 200 last season. Well, Mike Simon has got 414 wins, but I think the active guy has about 600 <laughs> for spring. So he's, to get to number one, even though he's 10th, is, is a ways. Our next game will be Tuesday, north-south yeah. again. North-south, looking forward to that. Here went uh, an inning and two thirds, gave up uh, four hits. More than you expect. He struck out three, but he also walked two. And that was part of the downfall, the walks. Nice. Yeah. And he's responsible for all the yeah. runners. And yeah. now we have the top of the order up, Marty. Well, right, Berg is up. Which, uh, Jake uh, is 0 for 3, but uh, he's, uh, he's dangerous. He's yep. a leadoff hitter for a reason. And uh, he got the ground ball there. He got the ground Dang ball it. that he wanted, but uh, <coughs> unfortunately, well now I think now Sherg is at second and James is at third. But uh, he got the big strikeout, about inches away from Shurg on that single. And there's a strike that you needed. Right, I, think, I don't think he wanted to swing at that one. He got the bat hanging out there and did foul it back. Berg is uh, walked in the first, 
reached on a fielder choice in the third, struck out and flew out to left on a hard hit ball at uh, Lollensack, made a nice play on. Boy, that looked like a pitch he had called for a strike earlier. He does it to the right-handed batters, but not the left-handed batters. Two balls and one strike. There's a nice pitch for a strike. Evens the count at two and two. We're still with two outs. Yeah. Any base. Six to four Bayport. They still have the bases loaded. Gotta get out of here, boys. There it is. Ooh. That's a good foul. piece of hitting. Let's get a piece of it. To the ninth, bullpen area. Ninth batter of the uh, inning. Mark. Right, yeah, exactly. I was just gonna say that. You're stealing my thunder. <laughs> You always do that. I get all these questions for the pregame interview, and I <laughs> ask you one, and all of a sudden you got all of them answered. I didn't even get a chance to ask you the other three. God. We're going to start doing the interviews from the, or the openings from the press box next year. A bouncing ball to first. Askalevich on a nice play and hustles over to first to get the final out, but not before Bayport scores three runs. And at the end of six and a half, it's Bayport six, North four. Hey you. Yeah you, getting that college education, what are you gonna do? Graduate and take some office job? Be like everybody else. Or will you dare do something different? Like? Be a teacher. You could be my teacher. You got skills. The smarts. Yes, you. You could be the teacher I never forget. That would be cool. Does that corporate job even have recess? What are you going to make of yourself? What are you going to make of me? Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah. I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Back at uh, Wildwood Baseball Park, we're uh, north. See it up there, trails by two. They have one more chance here in the bottom of the seventh. Oh, well, you gotta get somebody on, a walk, hit, any way to get on will help here. You only trail by two. Calver Lonick on the mound for uh, Bayport. And uh, Askalevich will be the uh, leadoff hitter for North. He's uh, two for three. And a pitch for a strike. Hard swing by Nick, but he fouls it off to the right. Hard worker in baseball, very hard worker. Is he playing with the Legion team this year, Chris? I do not know for a fact if he is or not. I think he is. And, uh, I know on your notes that you gave me from last year, he played for a team uh, yeah. in Appleton, yep. a traveling team. I always like to see the kids stay home and yep. play with their uh, friends and hometown team. Good at bat, Nicholas. He's battling. Count is two and two. We're in the bottom of the seventh north trails. 
six to four. They were up entering the top of the seventh, four to three. The Bayport rallied. And takes one on the outside corner. The guy that bridged the gap for uh, Bayport was uh, Bobby Tilot. Got him pitching three innings. Sure. Held north to one run. Got to get that guy, that first guy on. Ethan Schurg. Everything after one, Chris. Yep. Well, that's what Bayport got that first guy on, bunted, and well, he doubled. And right, but still. That's what they needed to do. <laughs> Got to get that first one. And uh, now there's a little swagger in Bayport, talking to their pitcher. And hey, it's always easy to have some swagger when you're playing with the lead. Yep. Hey, give them this much, they hung in there. Yep. Uh, North had some opportunities actually early in the game to score more runs. They just uh, couldn't capitalize. And uh, uh, liner right to the third baseman. Sure, get the ball very hard, but uh, no luck. But anyway, it's, you know, in those lost opportunities, a lot of times comes back to haunt you. Yep, and there's a big... Uh Crooked number in the wrong column of errors that didn't help either, but uh, you're right, Bayport hung in there, and um, definitely a game North could have got today. Devin Lollensack is up his uh, first appearance at the plate. He's playing out in left field. Sounded like he might have tipped that one right into uh, Hebert's glove. But the count is 0-2. And it's going to be a monumental rally if North can come back. And Lollensack takes strike three, and that's the ball game. At the end, uh, Bayport did a rally in the top of the sixth, seventh, and uh, won the game six to four. North uh, drops to uh, two and three on the year. We don't know what Bayport's record is either. One and zero oh, was their North first game is, of the year. North is two and four now. Two, two and four. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Chris mentioned our next game will be on Tuesday of next week at the North South game. We look forward to bringing you that game for the crew. And Scott Mailoff, our director, I'm Mike Martin saying thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you down the road.